learners welcome to the teaching learning session of sociology in the lecture series of sociology in our next in our in our last lecture we discussed about dialectic materialism given by the karl marx in today's lecture we'll discuss about class conflict theory of karl marx before starting the class conflict theory uh, a quick recap of previous class dialectical materialism dialectical materialism is what karl marx has borrowed the concept of dialectics from hegel according to hegel there are there are society changes because of thesis antithesis and synthesis and ideas are responsible for this thesis antithesis and synthesis as the idea changes thesis changes to antithesis antithesis to synthesis and this is a cyclic process karl marx borrowed this concept from hegel according to karl marx there is a thesis antithesis and synthesis but he made changes in the theory given by the hegel according to karl marx it is not the ideas which are responsible for thesis antithesis and synthesis but it is class which is responsible for thesis antithesis and synthesis phase right because of the change in the classes because of the conflict in the classes a new society changes and a new society comes up right class conflict theory class conflict theory as we all know that uh, karl marx is economic determinist according to karl marx everything depends on economics and material for karl marx history is story of human labor and struggle it is not a struggle of abstract ideas as said by hegel it is story of human struggle against and in hostile right so according to marx story of human labor and struggle is story is not a story of abstract idea but it is a story of human struggle against and in a hostile right every human being struggle for survival they struggle against nature for their survival they struggle against one another for their survival one class struggle against another for their survival so survival for survival everyone struggles struggle against nature struggle against one another struggle against class right so um, materialism is uh, as we all know that karl marx studied the previous traced back the previous um, societies whether it's a slave society feudal society and he studied capitalistic society because he lived in capitalistic society according to marx the history of all hetero existing society is history of class struggle the history is the story of class struggle our opposing material interest and resources as per uh, karl marx existing society the history of existing society is history of class struggle the existing society exists because of the class struggle right that's why that's what he told in dialectical theory that thesis antithesis and synthesis is because of class struggle so the history of the existing society is because of the class struggle and Uh, why why uh, this classes struggle against each other because of their opposing material interest and resources their resource interest uh, their material interest and resources are different from each other their uh, their interests are opposite to each other he studied the slave society and according to uh, marx there were two antagonistic classes master and slave and master and slave struggle there was a conflict between master and slaves right because of their different material interest and resources and then uh, because of this class struggle in the slave society a new society uh, 
uh, comes up that is feudal society feudal society is the result of the class struggle of slave society in feudal society again there were two uh, antagonistic classes lord and serfs right again there was over a period of time there was um, struggle class struggle between the lord and serf because of their opposing material interest right because of the class struggle between lord and serf the capitalistic society emerges right capitalistic society is result of the class conflict of lord and serf of feudal society right now in capitalistic society there are two classes capitalist and worker even in this society there there are their capital interest or their material interest are different their material interest of capitalist are different from their worker interest right and marx marx interpreted every society on the basis of material or economy according to um, marx matter or economy is responsible for the changes in the society and this economy is responsible for origin of class the classes originated because of economy or because of matter before men do anything else they must first produce the means of their subsistence everything else follows from the necessity to produce material means of our subsistence before we do anything else we need few things for our survival we need to we need means to we need to produce the means of our subsistence right the basic human activity according to marx is material production right material production for material production is important for the survival of classes right for the survival of human being and what are the basic material production what we need for the survival our basic needs that is the food clothes and shelter so we must produce food cloth and shelter this is basic human activity and these are required for this survival and these material production are responsible for origin of classes right food clothes and shelter means of production is responsible for origin of classes origin as we told as we know that material production is responsible for the origin of classes material production uh, there are two factors responsible for material production that is material forces of production or we call it means of production means of production or material forces of production is same thing and the second is social relation of production material forces of production or means of production means what helps in production what all do we need to produce we need raw material uh, we need machines we need tools factories equipments to produce all these things these factories tools resources raw material machineries equipments factories lands all these are means of production or material forces of production and second factor important for the material production is social relation of production how one is related to the means of production or forces of production how one is related how we are related to the material forces of production or means of production there are two ways in which human beings are related to the means of production first is a uh, one class there is uh, one, there are few who own it means who own the means of production who owns raw material machines tools factories equipments lands those who own it is known as dominant class and another group who don't own the means of production means they don't have a uh, raw material machines tools factories lands equipments they don't own anything the this these group or this group is known as subservient class or dominated class and this is responsible for origin of classes right origin of classes those who own the material of production production right makes a one class and that class is known as dominant class and those who don't own the means of production 
that class is known as subservient class or the dominated class right so material production is responsible for the origin of classes right one who own the uh, material production or material forces of production and the one who don't own the material forces of production those who don't own the material forces of production uh, are known as subservient class or have not we call them have not and those who own it are the dominant class or haves so i hope uh, uh, it's you understood what how you know, the origin of, what are the sources of origin of classes and how classes originated right now <clears throat> in every society whether it's a slave society a feudalistic society or a capitalistic society there were two classes dominant class and dominated class ever like in slave society the dominant class was the master class and the dominated class was the slave class right master and slave were there the masters were dominant class and the slaves dominated uh, dominated class or subservient class in feudalistic society feudal lords were dominant and serfs were dominated or subservient class in capitalistic society right capitalists are dominant class and workers dominated class or subservient class dominant class is that class which owns the means of production and we call them haves because they have the means of production that's why we call them haves and dominated class which don't own the means of production and they that's why we call them have nots because they don't have the means of production so dominant class and dominated class according to marx in every society whether it's a slave society feudal society capitalistic society there were two antagonistic uh classes right and their material needs are opposite to each other dominant class are always less in number and dominated class are always more in number then it is surprising when dominant class is less in number and dominated class is more in number then how can a dominant class rule the dominated class this is really surprising how it is possible that though that class which is less in number how can that class rule the class which is more in number dominated class right explain the karl marx explained this karl marx according to karl marx there are two methods of domination although dominant class is less in number still they dominate the dominated class have not they have dominate the have not because of the two methods of domination the first method is by controlling means of violence violence means through army police court the dominant class tries to control the dominated class right by using the means of violence army police and court but according to marx this is a short term uh, method of control right you cannot control anyone for a longer duration by means of violence you can control anyone uh, with uh, by threatening them uh, or through police court or army but for longer duration it is not possible uh, then the second method right the second method which is responsible for the control for the longer duration of control is that is by controlling the thoughts beliefs and ideas of working class this is the method by which the dominant class which is smaller in number controls the dominated class which is larger in number dominant class that is has control the thoughts beliefs and ideas of working class that is the dominated class or have not right how they control the thoughts beliefs and ideas of working class how can one control the thoughts beliefs and ideas of anyone according to marx they control the consciousness of the working class how they control the control the consciousness of the working class they control the consciousness of the working class by 
creating an ideological superstructure over the material economic base getting the point there are two ways of domination the first is means of violence which is a short term uh, uh, method of domination the second one is by controlling the consciousness of the working class by controlling the consciousness means what controlling the consciousness means controlling the thoughts beliefs and ideas of working class dominant class controls the thoughts the beliefs and the ideas of working class how they control the consciousness of working class by building a ideological superstructure on what by building an ideological superstructure over the material and economic base and as i told you in the last lecture according to uh, marx economy is the base of the society economy is one which is responsible for the change in the society right dialectical materialism right so over that economic base or the material base of the society the dominant class forms an ideological structure and through that ideological structure they control the consciousness of labor class that is they control the thoughts beliefs and ideas of labor class right economic economics is economics is the base of the society so society is based on the economics and culture culture is a part of this society what is culture if you remember we discussed about the culture any man made thing is culture according to hobbes so what is culture any man made thing is culture so society society makes the culture culture depends on the society and society depends on the economics the base of the society is economics that is what is economics the material forces of production and social relation of production this is the base of the structure uh, why the dominant class tries to or why the dominant class control the dominated class why the haves can why haves control have not because they don't want any changes in the society or the base of the society they want to maintain the status quo so that they so that capitalist should be capitalist and working class should be a working class they don't want any change in the society they want to maintain the status quo in the society to maintain the status quo in the society on the base of society that is on the economics base of the society is material forces of production and social relation of production on this they forms an ideological structure what is ideological structure ideological structure is a combination of idea culture belief morality law religion 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 or morality or law or belief or culture and idea this superstructure is formed by the capitalist just to control the consciousness of the working class according to marx right how it control what is the function of ideological superstructure the function of this ideological superstructure that is ideas culture belief law religion morals the function of these are to justify and legitimate legitimize the division of labor the division of labor is correct the function is to legitimize that the working class is working class that is correct and a capitalist if there is a division of labor you are doing something and someone else is doing something there is division of labor that is perfectly all right this is required to legitimize the class difference to legitimize the vast inequality of wealth wealth that's why we think na because of our destiny because of our kismat we can we are like this right that is because of this ideological superstructure to legitimize the status and power that exists in this society this is the function main function of ideological structure right and because of this working class suffers from the false consciousness they suffer suffers from the false consciousness and because they suffer from the false consciousness they remain a class in itself now 
according to marx because they are class in itself this is this is uh, reason because uh, this is the reason for their pathetic condition it is required that instead of class in itself they should be class for itself they are uh, this why they are class in itself the working class is class in itself because because of their false consciousness they are not aware uh, that uh, this ideological superstructure is uh, controlling their consciousness they they are not aware about their potential they are not aware that this dominating class or this has are exploiting them all right this is false consciousness that they are not aware about their potentials that they are not aware that this ideological structure is formed by the capitalist to control their consciousness that is why they are class in itself the day according to marx the day when the working class will realize their potential they will revolt against the capitalist and this will result in a new society this will result in a class conflict and this class conflict conflict will result into a new society and according to marx the new society will be communism he named that society as communist society or communism right and that day the class in itself will convert into class for itself then working class will be class for itself rather than class in itself but till date they, they this working class or the subservient class are not aware about their potentials that day they will aware about their potential they will come out of their false consciousness they will revolt against the capitalist and then there will be a class conflict this is the theory of class conflict class conflict and this class conflict will result in will result in a new society and that new society mark called that new society as communism and at that time this class in itself will become class for itself all right so this was the theory of the class conflict class conflict theory of marx according to marx philosopher have only interpreted the world in various ways the point however is however is to change it next is marx concept of alienation alienation the literal meaning of alienation is separation from marx has conceived of the alienation as phenomenon related to structure of those societies in which producer is divorced from the means of production and in which a dead labor dominates the living labor alienation is separation separations from your creations right according to marx alienation is a phenomenon in which the producers are divorced or separated from their means of production they separated this the worker class separated is separated from their creativity from their product the marx sells alienation in an action through which a person group and institution or society becomes alien because to the result of product of its own activity when they become alien to the result or the product of its own activity suppose let's take an example of a of a um, a bottle a manufacturing company right a, a person who is working in a bottle manufacturing company he is manufacturing the bottle but he alienates from the project he alienates from its own activity according to that worker it is not his product why because the capitalist has purchased his time he is being paid for that production so that is that is why they result the, that is they, they become alien from their own activities they alien from uh, their products because to the nature in which it lives to other human beings and in addition and through any or all of 
to itself to own historical created human possibilities this is because they become alienated from their own product alienation is always self alienation that is one alienation from oneself through one's own activity when we detach ourselves from our creativity when we attach when we detach ourselves from our production that is alienation alienation is self alienation the de alienation of society is therefore impossible without the abolition of alienation of different human activities from each other so df to for de alienation the abolition of alienation of different human activity is required right so this was the alienation concept of uh, of uh, karl marx today we discussed about the class conflict and the alienation concept and now we will start with a new um, a uh, sociologist emil durkheim emil durkheim one of the important sociologist emil durkheim was born on 15th of april 1858 and died on 15th of november 1917 emil durkheim was a french sociologist august comte and emil durkheim are known for their contribution in providing credibility to sociology and establishing it as an independent academic discipline august comte we discussed about august comte when we were discussing bsoc 131 august comte is known as father of sociology august comte is father of sociology but it was emil durkheim who was responsible for establishing the sociology as an independent academic discipline this is because of the efforts of emil durkheim today we are teaching and learning sociology as an academic discipline according to durkheim it was possible to develop a scientific study of society biographical sketch of emile durkheim let us discuss the biographical sketch of emile durkheim before discussing the works of emile durkheim emile durkheim was born on 15th of april 1858 in a small town in eastern france called apinal he grew up in a jewish family and his father was a rabbi rabbi means uh, he was a spiritual leader his father was a spiritual le leader and a religious teacher of jewish community right and uh, emile durkheim initially started studying this spirituality but then he lost his interest in spirituality uh, but and he joined a formal school he left that religious school and joined a formal school he grew up in a family with high focus on morality of morality and discipline because his father was a spiritual leader so it is understandable that he grew up in a family with a high focus on morality and discipline in his life he gave up judaism and christianity why he gave up judaism and christianity because he was of the opinion that these religions cannot provide answer to the problems of modern world according to him religion cannot provide the answer to the modern world but but uh, you will be surprised to know about his work on religion right according to him religion cannot provide the answer to the problems of the religion world but his work is tremendous or an incredible work incredible work on religion he retained an interest in intellectual investigation of religion see and morality throughout his academic career for higher education that kim joined ecole normale super 
of most distinguished college in France in 1879. He was initially interested in psychology and philosophy, but in the third year, he decided to study sociology, which according to him was more rational, scientific and practical in understanding philosophical question. So according to Durkheim, sociology is more rational, scientific and practical. Through sociology, one can get the answers of the philosophical questions. Durkheim was influenced by neo-Kantian scholars like Renouvier and Bottrox. Bottrop's thinking influenced Durkheim. Bottrop held that subject matter of each discipline should be distinct. Durkheim was also influenced by Renewer's commitment to rationalism, scientific study of morality, and secular education. You will see the effect or influence of both of these in the work of M.I.E. Durkheim. Durkheim was influenced by Renewer because of the rationalism, scientific study of morality and secular education. He was also influenced by historian Fessel D. Collins. Fussell the Convents advocated the scientific method and laid stress on importance of religious in social life. When we discuss about the work of Emile Durkheim, you will see the impact of these three in his work. From 1882 to 1887, Durkheim taught philosophy in state-run secondary school near Paris. By this time, while he was working in the secondary school, he decided on the topic for his doctoral thesis. He decided that he will work on the relation between individualism and socialism. Right? He started thinking about his thesis, his PhD thesis, doctoral thesis, and he decided that he will work on relation between individualism and socialism. And According to uh, Durkheim, society is more important than individual. We'll discuss uh, this concept. He later focused on the relation between individual and society. What is the relation between the individual and society? And in Paris, uh, while you are uh, um, appearing for doctoral thesis, you are uh, required to write two theses, one a smaller one, one a, and one, another one is a bigger one. And in smaller one, he was influenced by Montesquieu, and he wrote about Montesquieu. Montesquieu was a French political scientist, right? He tried, Montesquieu tried to explain the different types of state through other facts. He was a premier, premier political thinker who wanted to introduce scientific comparative approach to study of socio-political institution. Durkheim considered him one of the forerunner of sociology, right? Because he introduced the scientific comparative approach of the study. And in, in my uh, previous slides, I told you that it was the Durkheim who thought that us, it is possible to study society scientifically, right? So Durkheim considered Montesquieu a forerunner of sociology, right? That's why uh, in his smaller thesis, he writes about Montesquieu. In smaller essay, he writes about Montesquieu. He was, he thought that Montesquieu is the forerunner of the uh, sociology. And then finally, he finalized his topic to the relation between individual personality and social solidarity, right? He had completed his first draft of his dissertation in 1886 and the idea subsumed in it were incorporated in his first book, The Division of Labor in Society. This is the one of the most important work of Aymai Darkim, The Division of Labor in Society. And this is 
Now this work is from this work as the uh, um, sub sum. This is the sub sum of his dissertation, the division of labor in society. He described about the division of labor in the society and the role of division in the labor in the society and why is it required? Is it good or not? Whether society there should be a division of labor in the society or not? Right? <clears throat> It was a period of enlightenment and industrial development in Europe. And this industrial development uh, impacting has impact on England, Germany, and even on France. France was impacted because of, in, uh, because of this uh, industrial development. And it was a period of enlightenment. What is enlightenment? We discussed about in uh, about enlightenment in our previous lecture. What is enlightenment? Enlightenment is when people started thinking about logically, right? They uh, denied. They denied uh, to accept everything what the church said, right? They started thinking logically, rationally, right? At that time, in England, Adam Smith, an economist, had written a century earlier, a path-breaking book, The Wealth of Nation, and this book provided a theory for division of labor. His work was based on the wealth of nation. This wealth of nation provided a theory for the division of labor. It had an increasing production, efficiency, and well, the revolutionary idea, the division of uh, labor, was given a social, given a sociological meaning by the Durkheim. He wrote about the function, causes, and abnormal forms of division of labors, not in economics but in social field in society itself. Right? Uh, he uh, discussed about the division of labor in social field uh, rather than on the basis of economic. He wrote about the functions and abnormal forms of division of uh, labor. They are, uh, we'll discuss about the forms of division of labors when we'll discuss about the division of labor concept of Durkheim. Durkheim explained the method of study of society and he explained these method in his book, The Rules of Sociological Method. Remember the books uh, written by the Durkin. The first is the division of labor and the second book is the rule of sociological method. In the book rules of sociological method, he explained the methods to study the society. In this book, he defined the nature of social facts. He laid down the rules for their observation, a recognition of normal and pathological of for explanation of sociological facts, right? He defined, in this book, he defined about sociological fact. What is sociological fact? He laid down the rules for the observation of sociological fact. How can you observe the sociological fact? And how can you recognize the normal and the pathological sociological facts? And what is normal and uh, pathological social facts, right? Then Durkin wrote a work on suicide. He wanted to show its social aspect and try to explain the social condition under which suicide rate goes up. He worked on suicide according to uh, uh, Durkin. Social conditions are responsible for suicide. He identified the types of society and said that each type had a different causes. There are the different social conditions are responsible for different types of society. In 1887, there came began his career as a professor in University of Bordex. He published his first book, The Division of Labor in Society in 1893, while he was working as a professor in Burdex University. 
and uh, other books that he published in Burdex were the uh, Rules of Sociological Methods in 1895 and Suicide in 1897. Remember the three important work of uh, the books published by uh, Emile Durkheim, The Division of Labor in 1893. The Rules of Sociological Method, 1895, and Suicide in 1897. In Division of Labor, he discussed about the division of labor in context to society, not, in, uh, not with context to economy. In Rules of Sociology, he described about social fact, how one can observe the social fact. Uh, he described about the normal and the abnormal social fact, and how can you distinguish between normal and abnormal social fact and in he in suicide book um, he described about the types of suicides and according to him there are uh, the, the, the social conditions are responsible for suicide and the, the different social con uh, conditions are responsible for different types of suicide in 1898 emile Durkheim founded one of the first sociology journal in world called Le and a sociology cube. Social context for emergence of sociology in Europe. How sociology emerged in Europe? What is the social context? Let's understand that. The emergence of sociology as a scientific discipline can be traced to the period of European history which saw tremendous social, political, and economical changes in French Revolution and Industrial Revolution. French Revolution, because of the French Revolution and Industrial Revolution, there were the social, political, and economical changes in the Europe, right? And this period of change in Europe is known as the Enlightenment period. As I discussed, what is the Enlightenment period? It was a period of Renaissance uh, when people started thinking about logically. It was a period of industrial revolution, right? Industrial revolution, the capitalist society emerged up and there are the two classes, that is the capitalist class and the uh, worker class and capitalist society emerged from the feudalistic society and because of the uh, feudalistic society because of the diminishes of the uh, feudalistic society uh, there were there was a uh, you and cry in the society right so uh, it was a period of change it was a period of turmoil in europe and the root of the ideas such as belief that both nature and society can be studied scientifically that human beings are essentially rational and that the society built on the rational principle will make human realize their infinite potential can be traced in the development of science and commerce in uh, Europe. The new outlook developed result of commercial revolution and the scientific revolution and crystallized during the French and industrial revolution gave birth to the sociology as a discipline as it was the period of Renaissance, right? It was, it was a period of social revolution, industrial revolution, um, commercial revolution. Because of the French revolution and scientific revolution, there was a turmoil in, in the society, right? And because of the changes in the society, because of the turmoil and you and cry in the society, this gave birth to the sociology as a discipline because the sociologists, because the intellectual wanted, uh, wanted to study about the, about the reasons, uh, reasons for the changes in the society and they want the stability in the society. They want that the stable uh, society should be stable. So this has given rise to the sociology. There was increase in assertion of individual political right and decrease in coll collective authority of state. Right? Individualism is on the peak and decrease and there was a decrease in authority of state. In 1871, 
the France was facing political crisis and there was a decline in national unity. France worked towards the political consolidation by focusing on social pro progress. After French Revolution, uh, there were many other revolution, right, uh, uh, that uh, make the French society unstable, right? There was, because of the instability of the society, there was a decline in national unity. Then Kim believed that sociological method could provide a solution to decay in morale order. Intellectual influences on Durkheim's work, social realism. Durkheim provided social explanations for all phenomena. According to Durkheim, there is a social explanation for each and every social phenomenon, for every phenomenon. And he provided the social explanation for every phenomenon. Durkheim was a social realist and he visualized society as sue generises and having existence prior to individual. Sue generises means generated by itself, right? Like ameba, right? He visualized society as sue generises and society existed prior to individual. So according to um, Emile Durkheim, society is important than individual, right? As per the utilitarian social theory advocated by John Stott Mill and Jemry Bentham, individuals were autonomous and were not restrained by larger social rules, but Durkheim rejected this. According to the utilitarian social theory, which was given by the Bentham and uh, Strauss Mill, uh, this according to this theory, that individuals were autonomous and uh, society social rules cannot restrain the autonom autonomy of individual. But according to Durkheim, it is not like this. Durkheim held that society preceded the individual. Society is important than individual. According to utilitarian theory, individual is important than the society. But according to Durkheim, society is more important than the individual. As the society, according to Durkheim, society existed prior to the individual. So society is more important than the individual. Society and individual are inseparable right and there exists a social constraints on individual according to Durkheim the social constraint always exists always uh, exists on the individual that's why we call log kya kahenge that is the social constraint society and individuals are inseparable individual cannot live without society and society is what so society is made up of individual group of people so they are inseparable and societal constraint always exists on the individual. Their action is not always utilitarian. Whatever an individual does is not because of the utilitarian uh, requirements. He believed that human action is not based on the common motives or driven towards self-interest, but there is an external constraint that exists which led us to engage in certain action. Uh, that's why we call do's and don'ts. This is acceptable in the society and this is not. That is what ex Durkheim explained. According to Durkheim, human action is not based on the self-interest, not only on the self-interest, but they are driven by the external constraints and exist which leads the which leads an individual to en engage in certain action this is the external constraint which forces us to do certain things or to take certain actions that is why we do that is this is good 
this is acceptable in the society we should do this this is not we should not do this this is why this is the external constraint which influences the actions of an individual this led the came to write the rules of sociological method he explained all these concept in his book the rules of sociological method J. J. Ross had influenced on Durkheim's thought on morality and society. Morality and society was influenced by Ross. Durkheim was influenced by Ross' belief that there is a need for common social and moral rules that keep the society together, as that was an era of turmoil. So every sociologist, every intellectual wants. that there should be a stability in the society that's why there came always thought about the society rather than the individual that's why uh, the morality he uh, he talked about the morality uh, and about the society about the common social rules right so uh, there came believe that there is a need for common social and moral social uh, moral rules to keep the society together to stabilize this society to uh, to uh, to stabilize this society but darkin didn't agree with ross individualistic theory uh, ross held that collective will draw from many individual wills and therefore society in that sense emerges from individuals will right but on the other hand darkim analyzed morality in relation to society uh, rather than individual ross analyzed morality in relation to individual will but darkim analyzed morality individual uh, morality in relation to society hobbes who held that individuals contract out of nature and paid emphasis on individual darkim held that constraint emerges from collective and not to the individual so according to from this we can make out according to darkim collective constraints or society is more important than the individual so darkim is one of the sociologist who has given priority to the society rather than individualism according to darkim society is more important individual exists because of the society according to herbert spencer it is individual who was engaged in self interested and acts who work towards maintaining the social whole it is this self according to hobbs uh, sorry herbert spencer it is this self interest of the individual who is responsible for maintaining the social whole but darkim held that social integration is not the result of the individual action but a sense of solidarity that keeps the society together whether it's hobbes whether it's ross whether it's spencer everyone said it is because of individual society exist they have given uh, more stress on the individuality rather than the society but the kim was of the opposite uh, opposite uh, idea or of opposite thinking to hobbes ross spencer according to darkim it is solidarity it is uh, uh, constraint collective constraint it is society which is more important than the individual or individual actions right that is how darkim is different from these sociologists or philosophers in his book the rule of sociological method darkim developed a methodological framework to study society he defined how can you study society according to darkim it is possible to study society scientifically 
and how can you study uh, how can you study uh, society scientifically he uh, developed a methodological framework to study the society and he described that framework methodological framework in his book the rule of sociological method he held that sociology is a study of social facts as suicide rate as a suicide rates religious affiliation morale etc etc according to him study of social study of social fact is sociology what is social facts then the social facts exercise a constraint upon individuals the ultimate social reality in group and not an individual what is a social fact social fact according to uh, ma darkem uh, social fact is anything at social fact exercises a constraint upon an individual the ultimate social reality is group and not the individual and the social facts and are external and cannot be reduced to the individual facts right so society is more important than the individual social facts are the constraints upon the individuals the ultimate social reality of the group and the social facts are external and cannot be reduced to the individual facts scientist scientism and influence of positivism the term sociology was founded by august comte in 1882 and august comte is known as the father of sociology but in 1887 the kem instituted this study of sociology as an academic discipline right sociology could be established as a scientific discipline only when the causal relations underlying the social activities could be studied right causal relationship means karan karan ka siddhant you can establish a sociology as a scientific discipline when you can explain the relationship the causal relationship of the social activities when you can study the relationship the reason the causes of the social activities what is the reason behind the social activities uh, when you can give the reason uh, when you can study the causal relationship uh, then you can uh, establish sociology as a scientific discipline what is scientific discipline science explains the reason right Darkem was influenced by Montesquieu, as I explained you earlier. Montesquieu's idea that science of society was concerned with explanation of facts rather than mere speculations. Rather than speculating the society, it is important to uh, explain the facts, right? Explore the facts. Give the reasons. You can study. the society uh, society scientifically uh, when you can develop a relation between the social activities that's all for today we'll continue with uh, sci scientism and influence on positivism in our next lecture and we'll discuss the other works of uh, emile durkheim in our next lecture thank you very much namaskar